With the school year just weeks away, the debate over whether or not to reopen actual classrooms for in-person lear learning is heating up. Teachers unions are threatening to strike if classrooms reopen as a group of parents in California decides to sue the state to open up the schools to their children. So let's talk about the lawsuit with the founder of Center for American Liberty, Harmeet Dillon. We'd hope to have one of the parents too. We're having some technical difficulties, but always glad to have you with us, Harmeet. Happy to be here, Shannon. Okay, so this is what the New York Times headline is. Teachers are wary of returning to class and online instruction too. It goes on to say, many unions, while concerned about the safety of classrooms, are also fighting to limit the amount of time that teachers are required to be on video over the course of a day. It sounds like there are a lot of different battles that will have to be fought here, Harmeet. Yeah, I, I don't really understand that. I mean, I think most people go into teaching with a good heart and they want to actually teach students. It's a, it's a, it's a vocation and it's kind of shocking that uh, the teachers union is misrepresenting this because most of the teachers I've spoken to, if they are younger and healthy, they absolutely want to be in the classroom because they know that's the only way that they can be effective. And if they read their science, they know that they can't catch COVID from the kids and that if they take reasonable precautions, there's no reason they can't be like any other essential worker in our economy me taking precautions and going to work and this is a very essential job Shannon and the and the teachers union and the governor are playing politics with our children and our future in this country another piece in the New York Times uh, says I don't want to go back that's the title many teachers are fearful and angry over the pressure to return saying teachers say crucial questions about how schools will stay clean keep students physically distanced and prevent further spread of the virus have not been answered I mean that sounds like a legitimate worry if you're walking back into a situation that you don't know how it's going to be secured is that valid no. First of all, I wouldn't believe the spin of the New York Times. Second of all, fear is not a reason for policy that violates our California and our federal constitution. Many school boards in California, including the uh, one of our parents is, a, is on a school board, elected school board, made preparations. Many private schools made preparations. And the studies show that, in fact, with some preparations, this can be done safely. And to be clear, Shannon, we're not trying to force anybody back into the schools. If you're a teacher and you feel you can't do your job and you need to do it remotely or frankly not at all I guess we'll have to deal with that but even parents who are scared of the child who's vulnerable they don't have to send them it should be an option in every school district to have effective in-person teaching as well as distance learning for those with special medical needs but those with special developmental needs who are guaranteed by federal law additional assistance and federal money is paid to California for that they're getting zero kids with autism kids with speech disabilities kids with other types of learning disabilities are getting nothing from the state and that's a constitutional violation that we address in our lawsuit Shannon how many uh, or a percentage of students in California are now covered by these orders by the governor that will essentially keep them home is it a hundred percent is there some flexibility for the local uh, school boards or school districts there's no flexibility for 80% of the parents and the teachers in California. They are tied to some metrics that the governor made up and that are countywide, even if there's no flare up or no issue in the particular area. Now, you know, just to, the, the science is there is virtually no transmission possible between children. There's also no transmission between children and teachers. The transition that could occur, a transmission that could occur is between teachers, just like between workers at Walmart, between workers in the government, between workers and other essential jobs, which we all know, those of us who go to work, I go to my workplace, we take precautions. We wash our hands, we wear masks, we do social distancing, and largely those, uh, those methods work. But if somebody is scared, uh, I think they can make, they can make provisions for the teacher to teach remotely, but why condemn the students to what is known, according to the 35 experts that signed on to our declaration, to be completely ineffective? And children are suffering from depression, increase in suicidal ideation, digital dependency, and isolation, and regression if they have special needs, and disadvantage in competing for college entrance if they are in that in, in that zone. You can't do lab, you can't do a lot of those things remotely. So this is doing a disservice to the children. The governor and the state need to do much better to educate and fulfill their obligation under the Constitution. Well, we will follow your lawsuit there uh, as parents around the country are watching. Harmeet, thank you. You're welcome.